Have you ever wondered what true freedom is? I've often been told, "Oh, you're an entrepreneur. You're a free person. You are your own boss." And I often find myself chuckling in the head that we still misconstrue mere professional license as freedom. We misinterpret the ability to do what we want as freedom, but that is merely superficial. There's more to true freedom than that. And in this episode, we'll explore three keys to that elusive true freedom where we're not left wanting for anything more than that. Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Own Your Everyday series. I'm your host and self-awareness coach Shweta Shivraman. In this episode, we will explore what freedom is, the three keys to true freedom, and how we can apply it in our day-to-day lives. This episode brings in the concept of freedom from two books I've read and cherished: New Earth by Eckhart Tolle and Freedom from the Known by Jiddu Krishnamurthy. The quest for freedom has been inherent in every human since the inception of time. But let's begin with understanding the term freedom. We often equate the availability of choice and liberty to act independently, making freedom from the absence of constraint or compulsion as freedom. Jiddu Krishnamurti, whose mission was to make man free, says, "Freedom is a state of mind which is so intense, active, alive, and vigorous, and it throws away every form of slavery." dependency conformity and acceptance when you hear this the first thing that struck to my mind is that is this freedom outside of us in the world or within ourselves if you're listening to my words chances are you're living in a free country with enough freedom and liberty to choose what you're listening to so out there is not much of a problem but what about within us are we free inwards we are slaves to our bodies can we give up one meal in a day can we think straight when we have a minor toothache or need to pee real bad my guess is that's a firm no we give in to the wearing demands our body makes without question every single moment every single day we are slaves to our minds we go up and down the roller coaster of endless thoughts emotions regardless of whether it leaves us feeling pleasant at the end of it Our minds are compulsive and voluntarily set to self-destruct mode where we constantly oscillate between the past and the future regretting one and trying to control the other our minds are entirely consumed by the compulsive chatter we engage in often without our awareness or knowledge we are slaves to our desires if we desire to be famous or successful our desire becomes our masters and not us Our thoughts, feelings and actions are determined by these obsessive desires which we place over and above who we are and what we have right now. So, how can we truly be free within and without? Eckhart Tolle writes in the book New Earth that there are three keys, three aspects of true freedom and enlightened living. He says, non-resistance, non-judgment and non-attachment. Let's look at each of them. First, non-resistance. Being one with what happens. That's how Eckhart Tolle defines this term, non-resistance. As long as we want life to turn out a certain way, we are a slave to external circumstances. Non-resistance does not mean passivity or giving up. On the contrary, radical acceptance of what is takes immense strength and equanimity. It is being fully involved and one with the flow of life that allows one to accept whatever comes without labeling it good or bad. All spiritual disciplines accept one version of this non-resistance. The question really is though, how do we put it to practice? The strength to practice this according to me comes from the belief that all we encounter in life is temporary and impermanent. In Vedanta the world is frequently compared to an ocean the surface of the sea is constituted of many waves which are rising and falling although the surface is agitated and restless deep within the ocean remains as one mass of water serene and unaffected by the disturbances on the surface similarly when we view the world superficially there are a lot of people objects contexts that are constantly changing 
However, behind these changing factors, Vedanta says there is a changeless substratum, the all-pervading reality supporting them all. So, what happens is that currently we lead our lives on the surface engaged with this changing phenomena and our identification with the changing aspect of the world renders us as a limited being who is happy sometimes, sad sometimes, terrified sometimes. But if we were to identify with that changeless substratum, we can rise above the fluctuations of joy and sorrow and enjoy that permanent state of serene or bliss or whatever you'd like to call it. If we can recognize that the changing phenomena of objects in life are but temporary and shall pass one day, in that case, we can adopt the principle of non-resistance to everything that comes our way. Good or bad, we can remain anchored to that changeless reality and flow with life as one with the current. 2. Non-judgment the second key to true freedom is not judging situations, people or things as good or bad. The minute we qualify things with judgment, we are enslaved by our beliefs and thoughts about it. When we judge, we impose our value systems and bring in our past conditioning and it's nothing but the past or the memory acting in the present. Jiddu Krishnamurti says, to be free of all authority, of your own and that of another, is to die to everything of yesterday so that your mind is always fresh, always young, innocent, full of vigor and passion. It is only in that state that one learns and observes and for this a great deal of awareness is required, actual awareness of what is going on inside yourself. Consciously being aware of our thoughts and emotions and deliberately refraining from judgments is the key to being truly free, completely present and totally receptive to what is unfolding in each and every now moment. 3. Non-attachment True freedom is being in control of our desires and cravings. Freedom remains elusive as long as we crave or attach ourselves to positive, pleasant or desirable experiences and have an aversion to unpleasant or unfavorable experiences. Yoga calls this Raga and Dvesha. Quoting Jiddu Krishnamurti from the book Freedom from the Known, he says, If you can look at all things without allowing pleasure to creep in, at a face, a bird, the color of a sari, the beauty of a sheet of water shimmering in the sun, or anything that gives us delight, if you can look at it without wanting the experience to be repeated, then there will be no pain, no fear, and therefore tremendous joy. It is a struggle to repeat and perpetuate pleasure which turns it into pain. How beautifully articulated. All of mankind's actions are fueled by this attachment to pleasure and desire to avoid pain. Indian scriptures call it Dukkha Nivritti and Sukha Prapti. And when we are constantly in the search for this elusive state, we lose our freedom. This doesn't mean we stop enjoying the sensory pleasures, but simply give up the longing for them. When we stop craving for things we are attached to or are not continuously obsessed with avoiding unpleasant things, we can be free in the truest sense. So how can we practice these three keys in our lives? 1. Accepting the good with the bad When we can receive the not so good things in our life the same way we receive good things, we stop resisting to the flow of life. Instead, we surrender to it and move with it. Every time you find yourself overly elated or sad in life, remember that all will pass and stay grounded through it all. Two. Every time you judge something as good or bad, try to understand whose voice it is and what conditioning makes you feel so. As adults, we carry conditioning from parents, elders, teachers and society and the misconstrued interpretations from our childhood. The more we evaluate and question the source of our beliefs, the sooner we can rid ourselves of all that we are not and be free. Three. Detach, detach and detach with as many things as you can. 
The more you identify with something or someone, the more your joy and peace are linked to the presence of it in your life. To be free, we must let go of these attachments. So here's your own your everyday tip for this week. Seek freedom within and experience the many fruits of complete freedom by practicing the three keys of non-resistance, non-judgment and non-attachment. If you're curious to delve deeper, the two books I mentioned at the start of the episode will be a great place to begin. Until we meet again, this is Shweta signing off. Hoping you have a fabulous week ahead.